Today I would like to thank my mom for being the best mom, grandma, and friend you could ever ask for. I would like to thank her for being a very kind, soft-hearted, caring, fun-loving person. I've spent many, many hours sitting with my mom hearing about her life, and I would like to share a little of her life stories with you. She was born to Rose and Emery Broker on October 27, 1926, in Calgary, Alberta. She was the third of six children with three sisters and two brothers. Her younger years she found very hard being raised away from her mom. She loved her daddy dearly, but he worked long and hard hours, and raising the kids, he had little time for fun. She did see her mom, but not daily, and she missed her a lot. In grade five, she was Calgary City Champion racer and broad jumper in track and field. She liked to draw and she loved to sing. If her teacher had to leave the classroom, she would ask mom to go up to the front and sing to the class while she was gone from the room to entertain the class. She, she quit school after grade nine to work at a toy shop in Calgary, painting and building wooden toys. She left there to work at the Palliser Hotel as a bus girl. When working at the Palliser early one morning, she was told by one of the cooks that her singing was beautiful, but she must not sing so loud, so early in the elevators and hallways, she was waking up the guests. At the young age of 16, she would take the bus to CFCN radio station after work to sing on the radio. She also sang in church. She met my dad as a young, handsome soldier, and they were married when she was 19. Over the next seven years, she had six children, Lester, Carol, Russ, Linda, Danny, and myself, Hallie. Linda passed away in 1952, shortly before I was born. Till her final day, Mom found it hard to talk about losing Linda. Mom was a loving, kind mother, lots of fun and very hard working. She made do with little and had to be creative with her money to keep us dressed nicely for church and Sunday school. She made it a priority to take us to Sunday school and to church. Thank you, Mom, for caring so much about your children. As young as I can remember, she worked out of the home cleaning Red Deer City Hall in the Hudson's Bay. I remember her taking the bus or walking home and then starting her evening, cooking, running a house, raising a big family, and caring for her garden. She had little or no time for herself, and no matter how hard she worked, she still made time for fun with us kids. Scrub baseball, tobogganing, skating, games and picnics of fried chicken and homemade potato salad. Our summer vacations were camping, with five kids in a tent, how do you manage to take enough food, sleeping bags, air mattresses, etc.? And how do you manage to have any fun yourself with all that work? Thank you, Mom, for taking the time and effort to make that happen and make it so much fun. We often had a huge family puzzle going, and she was known to sneak one piece out without anyone seeing. When the puzzle was done and you thought there was a piece missing, she would casually come over and put in the last piece. You always knew she had the piece. She always denied it, and you'd always think the piece you could not find was the one Mom had hidden. Singing was always an important part of Mom's life and ours. She was usually in the church choir. She was a member of the Sweet Adelines and the Waska Susan Red Deer. Being one of the lead singers, she would sing solos, duets, trios, and quartets. For one big performance at the Memorial Center in Red Deer, she taught some of the members how to hula dance. I remember what a big deal those performances were. We all got dressed up, and I was so proud that was my mom up there, such a big part of entertaining thousands of people. She was so beautiful and so talented. She also played the piano, accordion, and steel guitar. We spent many nights at Friends. The adults jammed. Dad would tape it all on his reel-to-reel -reel with us. Kids would be playing and laughing and screaming in the background, and Dad caught it all on tape. Every once in a while, us kids were called in to sing a song. We would sing, and off we would go. Mom, thank you for the music in our life. 
1968, Mom studied first aid to become an ambulance attendant working with my dad for the county of Mountain View. It was a very scary thing when they would get a call on a snowy, cold winter night to head out on the highway to a terrible car accident. I know they saved lives and risked their own to do so, and I'm very proud of them. Mom and Dad separated in 1970. She had done some driving at the farm and on trips when Dad was tired, but never had her driver's license. At 45 years old and on her own, she learned how to drive and bought her first car. She was living in Didsbury in 1971 when she received a phone call. It was a wrong number. After a short chat, he decided to call her again, and they had an even longer chat. He asked around town about her and heard very nice things, so he called her again so he could meet her. He was a wonderful man by the name of Jack Fuller. Mom and Jack were married in 1972 and moved to Fort St. John with his children Haley and Heather. They became a beautiful extension of our family. When Jack retired in 1978, they moved back to Red Deer where they enjoyed many years of happiness together. They had all kinds of fun, grad sailing, camping, boating, making reindeer, bike riding, and just having fun. They were wonderful involved grandparents. Mom was an incredible grandma with a basement full of tickle trunks. Tickle trunks are play trunks. She made one for playing dress up, one for playing wedding. With all the wedding dresses, she made them to fit them, complete with veils and bouquets. And of course, the makeup trunk, the hairdressing trunk, the house playing trunk, the doll and baby clothes trunk, and the playing school trunk. All of the above included an incredible tea party, complete with tiny little tea sets and little sandwiches and tiny cakes, the works. How do you ever thank someone for this kind of love and commitment? Thank you, Mom, for all the beautiful memories and stories the kids have, uh, how special it was to be at your place. Then there were the camping trunks full of sand toys and animals, all the stuff they would need to take the kids camping. My girls have trunks full of wonderful memories of the days with Grandpa and Grandma. Thank you for all the wonderful times at Pine Lake. Going back a few years, my high school friends were often very envious of my cool, young-at-heart mother. She was a strong Christian influence and actively involved in our church. There could never be too many young people in our house. She was patient and fun. My friends loved her and always wanted to be at our house. Thank you, Mom, for your involvement when we were teenagers. My girls felt the same way about their cool, young-at-heart grandma. When they were in junior high, they taught Mom how to rap dance, and Mom perfected it. Kim and Becky's friends watched. They could not believe their grandma would actually learn how to rap dance. Even their young friends loved to be with her. She sang at their school as the guest of honor grandma on country and western night and all the kids in their school called her grandma and wanted her autograph. As mom grew older, she remained open-minded and young at heart. Often when my girls would ask if they were old enough to do something that I questioned, we would agree to ask grandma her opinion, and that would be the deciding factor. Instead of being old-fashioned and prudish, she was sensible and always had good reasons for her decisions Thank you, Mom, for being so open-minded and wise. Many times as teenagers, my girls would want to spend a few days in Red Deer with Grandpa and Grandma alone. How many teenagers want to do that? One time, Kim spent her own hard-earned money to take the bus to Red Deer for a few days to be alone with them. Mom could be so much fun, whether sitting around telling stories and laughing, or going out of her way to entertain you and make you laugh. Anyone who got to spend any amount of time with Mom knew how much fun she could be even in her older years. When she was 80, Becky took her out to her favorite pizza place for lunch, and Mom was using her cane to cross the road. She said to Becky, You must be embarrassed I have to use this cane. Becky took her arm, took her cane away from her, and bent over and started to use it herself so it looked like she was one with the cane. 
Grandma loved it and laughed, of course. When Mom and Jack sold their house and moved to Heritage Park Towers in Edmonton, they both became a huge part of the social life of the people in the building. Mom continued to entertain with her singing, complete with her outfits to dress up for all the songs, some of them being Minnie Pearl, All I Want for Christmas is My Tooth Front Teeth, and her Hawaiian themes. She joined the choir in the cantata at church. They lived in Edmonton for 10 years and continued to be very involved with their friends at Heritage and their church. During those 10 years in Edmonton, they were a daily part of my life and my children's life, and then my grandchildren's lives. We had many wonderful meals together. Meals and birthdays with cakes, lots of songs. We had trips to the zoo together, picnics and fun days at Fort Edmonton Park. Time with my grandkids playing and reading stories. Picnics. Lots and lots of picnics. Family backyard barbecues. And cuddles with babies and grandchildren. Thank you, Mom, for so much fun together. When they moved to Redwoods and Red Deer, they became involved with the same enthusiasm. The Redwoods Olympics. Dad with his poetry, and Mom with her singing and entertaining, her costumes and her gift of being fun and silly. As she grew older, she still loved picnics and campfires, and even a little camping now and then, as long as you drove her to the closest town to sleep in a bed. She even tried frisbee at 78 years old, and she loved it. Mom was always meticulous about how she looked, Everything had to match. Becky called her Matchy for years. She was known for her nice clothing and her earrings and jewelry and always looking so together. We were very fortunate enough to have Mom and Jack come and stay often with us for days at a time. And after Jack died, Mom would come by herself. During those visits, even with all the non-stop suffering, she was still able to crack you up with her sense of humor and the things she would say. Sometimes we would laugh till our stomachs hurt. Thank you so much for your wonderful sense of humor and so many laughs. One of her fun trademarks was to fill her mouth with water or coffee or whatever she was drinking, hit her cheeks with her fists and spray it all over you. Mom, thanks for being so silly over the years. As her grandchildren grew older, she developed new special relationships with her great-grandchildren. My grandchildren loved her dearly. They all called her Grateful Grandma and had a very special love and closeness that I think is almost unheard of with the age difference. This, I know, is because they loved and enjoyed her so much. She would hide her suffering best she could and tease them and play. But her favorite times with them was cuddle times, and they always offered her lots and lots of cuddles. It was so beautiful to watch them love her. Thank you, Mom, for being so easy and fun to love. Mom had seven children and stepchildren, 10 grandchildren, and 27 great-grandchildren. Unfortunately, not all are shown in these pictures. This was a picture on Mom's 86th birthday. Even here, you can still see her being silly and having fun, even with all her suffering. During her last years, Mom and I spent many, many hours sitting in my garden with the squirrels and the birds. She called it her little bit of heaven. Evening, she would try and stay up by the fire that is where we shared many of our talks and our laughs. Oh, how I miss those times. I so value all those precious times and will always be so grateful that God gave my family such a wonderful mom and grandma. I hope you regain with Linda, Mom. She is so lucky to now have you with her again. And I hope she makes up for all those years not being with you. And I hope now, Mom, you are back with my dad, Jack, holding hands and happy like you spent all the years of your marriage. 
He took care of you for all those years because you were so precious to him. He must be so happy to have you back with him. I am sure you no longer suffer from the screaming in your ears so you can be at peace, and you so deserve it. Oh, how I hope that you are happy and singing again. I hope you're strong and healthy and dancing all around. And I hope you're being silly and making others laugh. If I said a thank you for everything you did, this would go on way too long. Of all the mums in the world, I can't believe I got you. You were the best. We will miss you more than you could ever know. We love you, Mom. See you when we see you.